The second speaker for today is Francesca Tombari, and she's got, the title of her talk is Homotopical Decompositions of Simplicial uh, and Vitorious Rips Complexes. Thank you. Uh, hi all. Um, thank you for attending today's uh, talks and thank you to the organizers for the invitation. Uh, the work I'm going to present has been done together with Wojciech Krakowski, Alvin Jean and Martino Scolamiro. So, um, in algebraic topology, it is possible to retrieve the homology of a simplicial complex by taking a decomposition of it into uh, subcomplexes and studying the long exact sequencing homology associated. Um, in applied topology, instead, one usually does not start with a simplicial complex but with a metric space. Um, the most naive way of decomposing a metric space is by taking a uh, decomposition. Um, covering of its points. Um, however, when we build out a simplicial complex, uh, when we built a simplicial complex out of it, such as a Vittori strips complex, uh, the topological information obtained from the decomposition is not the same as the topological information of the total uh, space. Uh, so, in details, the problem in which we're interested in is the following. Uh, consider a simplicial complex K and a covering of its vertices given by uh, two subsets X and Y. Then this inclusion of simplicial complexes is well defined, where Kx and Ky denote respectively the restriction of K uh, to the subsets uh, of vertices X and Y. Notice that this is not um, the standard decomposition in subcomplexes that can be done in uh, algebraic topology, but is inspired by um, those decomposition that can be done in uh, on simplicial complexes arising from metric spaces, since they they're used a lot in uh, in uh, topological data analysis. We refer to it as a data-driven decomposition. For an example, uh, we take uh, uh, the simplicial complex K, which is the square on the right of the, pic of the picture, and take the decomposition of its vertices given by uh, the two vertices on the left and the two vertices on the right. Uh, so, uh, taking, uh, when restricting K to this, uh, to this uh, uh, subsets of vertices, we get uh, two contractible connected components. So, in general, the inclusion of a data-driven decomposition of a simplicial complex into the simplicial complex itself not only fails to be an equality, but it also fails to be a weak equivalence in general. Um, indeed, we, as, in, as in, the, in this example, in which the two simplicial complexes has, have uh, uh, different homologies. So here comes our main question. What's the difference between a simplicial complex and its data-driven decomposition? And how can we measure this difference? Um, before uh, going into the details of the problem, uh, let me just recall the definition of the star of a simplex, which might be slightly different from the one that you're used to. Uh, for us, uh, the star of a simplex sigma in a simplicial complex is the collection of uh, simplices in K that together with sigma still form a simplex in K. It turns out that um, the star of simplex is always a contractible subcomplex of K. For an example, uh, take this uh, simplicial complex obtained by um, two triangles, one empty and one full, um, sharing one uh, edge. If we take sigma as this shared edge, the star of uh, sigma will be um, the full triangle together with all its subsimplices. Um, Let's now have a first uh, glimpse on the techniques that we used uh, in, in our work. Um, with the, an example of a covering of the vertices of a simplicial complex K, where X and Y are taken by, uh, by removing one point for each from the 
total set of the vertices of k. And also the node with a, the intersection of x and y. Here you have a representation of what we have in mind with this decomposition. Here uh, it's also uh, drawn the edge uh, with endpoints x, y. Um, if it uh, indeed a one simplex in uh, the simplicial complex state k, then we can define the intersection of its star uh, with the, the restriction of k to the subset a, which leads to uh, this sequence of inclusions, inclusion of simplicial complexes where sigma st uh, denotes the suspension of uh, this subcomplex uh, ST. In particular, this is a co-fibration sequence, which means that we can obtain um, K by its data-driven decomposition uh, by um, coning off um, the suspension of ST. What's good um, of having a co-fibration sequence like this is that it induces a long exact sequence in homology. So the homologies of these three um, simplicial complexes are related. Um, yeah, in general, if you take um, the composition of uh, like, like, like the one before, so uh, the composition uh, a covering of the vertices of uh, a simplicial complex K, and you take a simplex sigma in K, then we can define the obstruction complex of sigma associated to, um, the, to the, the composition as the collection of non-empty subsets of A that together with sigma forms simplex in K. Uh, this is uh, a particular case was the um, subcomplex ST that we used uh, that we used above. Um, obstruction complexes are indeed simplicial complexes, and they play a crucial role in our understanding of um, the inclusion of the data-driven decomposition of a simplicial complex into the simplicial complex itself. Uh, notice also that um, they might be empty, and in this case, we may lose control over um, this inclusion that we want to study. Let's now do one step further and um, consider a subset sigma of n plus one distinct vertices of k. If sigma um, is not a simplex in K, then um, the simplicial complex K actually coincides with its data-driven decomposition. Otherwise, uh, so if sigma is a simplex in K, we get a similar uh, co-fibration sequence as before, uh, where in first position, we, we, we don't have any more the suspension of the obstruction complex, but the nth suspension of it. As we have mentioned before, um, having such a cofibration sequence, um, so this cofibration sequence contains a lot of information that can be um, um, written explicitly, um, analyzing the long exact sequence in homology induced. For example, um, uh, if the obstruction complex uh, is non-empty and has trivial reduced homology in all degrees, then uh, the simplicial complex K is weakly equivalent to uh, its data-driven decomposition and vice versa. Uh, the conditions on top of the arrow can be obtained, for example, when the obstruction complex is contractible. Um, before um, stating our main result, we just need a couple of definitions more. The first one is um, the set P, which is the collection of simplices in K that are entirely contained in X or entirely contained in Y, or if they have um, vertices in both sides of the decomposition, then 
they also have to intersect A. Equally important is uh, the collection of simplices in K that are not in P. One example is shown here, where uh, the gray triangle has vertices in both sides of the composition, but it does not intersect uh, the, in the intersection. The, it does not have vertices in the intersection. We will see that um, the obstruction complexes that are most relevant for us are precisely those ones that are associated to simplices in K minus P. Um, the definition of P also allows us to um, split uh, the inclusion of the data-driven decomposition of K into K in these two um, maps of in, in these two maps. Mm, but notice that uh, they are not anymore uh, maps of simplicial complexes because in general P is not simplicial, a simplicial complex. However, P um, is a subposet of K. So these uh, two maps can be seen as functors between uh, poset categories. It can be shown that the first map is always a weak equivalence. So in order to study their composition, we just need to focus on this second map which has fibers, categorical fibers, that are weakly equivalent to the obstruction complexes. That's where they, um, they arise in, in the theory, in, in the work. Um, this last observation allows us to uh, state uh, the following theorem. Um, consider uh, at first, a closed collection C of simplicial sets, where closed is referred to uh, weak equivalences and homotopy co-limits. Um, if you're not familiar with this uh, kind of theory, just keep in mind two examples of closed collection, um, the one of contractible simplicial sets and the one of unconnected simplicial sets that we're going to use in a moment. Um, so fixed this uh, closed collection C, assume that every obstruction complex associated to a simplex in K minus P satisfies C. Then the homotopy fibers of the inclusion of the data-driven decomposition of K into K itself also satisfies C. If this theorem is still a bit obscure, then um, let's see uh, two consequences of it that can be obtained by um, uh, taking the two examples of close collection that we have just mentioned. Uh, for example, if the obstruction complexes are contractible, then K is weakly equivalent to its data-driven decomposition. So they have uh, the same homology in all degrees. Whereas uh, if uh, the simplicial complexes are unconnected, then the inclusion induces an isomorphism on homotopy groups up to degree n and a surjection in degree n plus one. Um, and now we are back to the future. Uh, so remember that we took uh, uh, inspiration for our data-driven decomposition um, by simplicial complexes arising from metric spaces. So our aim now is to um, um, translate the condition that, conditions that we got for obstruction complexes into conditions on um, distances and on pseudometrics in the next slide. Um, let's start then with uh, um, a distance space ZD and a covering of its point of its points uh, with X Y. Uh, here uh, uh, the framework is different, but then the notation that I'm using is the same as before. 
uh, for the general case of simplicial complexes. Um, so in this distance space, pick one point X and one point Y, each one in one part of the decomposition. So precisely in X minus A and Y minus A. And also pick one point V in the intersections of the two subsets covering Z. Uh, consider also the following two conditions. The first one, uh, that says that um, the distance from X and Y should be greater or equal than distances between X and V and Y and V, which in terms of um, simplices of a Vietori strips complex uh, means that if X, Y is an edge in a Vietori strips complex of the distance space at some scale R, then the full triangle with V also should be a simplex in the same Vietori strips complex. Um, in particular, if um, Z is a subset of the Euclidean space, then condition one translates into the requirement of this angle, X, V, Y, to be greater or equal than 60 degrees. Um, the second condition, instead, requires that the diameter of the intersection A um, is uh, small enough, small enough in terms of um, uh, that it should be uh, uh, smaller or equal than the distance between X and Y picked as above. Uh, so if one and two hold, then uh, the, in the inclusion of the Vietori strips complexes of the decomposed space into the Vietori strips complex of the total um, um, distance space is a weak equivalence. And this is independent from the choice of R. So it's true for every R, for every parameter R. To conclude, um, we define um, pseudometric space given by uh, gluing together two uh, different uh, pseudometric spaces, each one with its own uh, pseudometric. Um, this new bigger um, um, pseudometric space has distance between uh, uh, two points uh, x, y, uh, picked in, as in the picture, given by uh, gluing through their intersection. Um, and, the, the, like, and the distance is given by the formula here uh, displayed, displayed in the picture. Um, ah, I forgot to say that here for simplicity, we, we consider the two uh, pseudometrics uh, intersecting. intersecting. Um, for, for this definition, we refer to uh, this space and isometric gluing. And, uh, this kind of spaces has been extensively studied by uh, this paper, in this paper by Adam Azek and co-authors, from which we also took inspiration for, for our work. Um, okay, so in this framework, um, we consider uh, one uh, last condition. Um, so, uh, Take one vertex V that in the picture could be X or could be Y in an edge of the Vietori strips of the gluing minus P as defined a couple of slides before. And also take two points A and B in the intersection capital A. Well, if the distance from A and V and V and B is smaller or equal than R um, in terms of simplices if they are edges in the Vietori strips uh, complex of the gluing, then this, um, their sum, so the sum of these two distances should be greater or equal than twice the distance between um, A and B. Uh, we refer to this condition as a strong simplex assumption. And if this hold, 
Then the inclusion of the vietari strips complexes of the decomposed space into the vietari strips complex of the gluing induces an isomorphism on pi zero and pi one and a surjection on pi two. Uh, which is a consequence of the homotopy fibers uh, of the inclusion being simply connected. Um, let me underline, underline that um, this is actually the first time that in our work the triangular inequality plays a role. Um, indeed, although uh, the idea of a data-driven decomposition is inspired by uh, simplicial complexes arising from metric spaces. The results that we've shown before are actually independent on the metric structure. So they are pretty general and hold for abstract simplicial complexes. Um, yeah, and with this, I would like to conclude and thank you again for listening. Uh, so thank you, Francesca. So I would like to invite everyone to unmute themselves and uh, um, clap. Uh, now we have time for questions. So, so you can either feel free to unmute yourself or type your questions into the chat window. Francesca, so I wanted to ask a question about this slide. So, um, this last one? Yeah, that's right. So, sigma mm -hmm. here in the picture, you're thinking of sigma as the edge between x and y? Yes. And yes, so, sorry. I, I think I forgot to mention it. And so, v, v is, is going to be either x or y. Is that exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. I see. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, thanks. Yeah, those are actually, so before, um, if you remember, I um, stressed the fact that uh, um, uh, the simplices in which we are most interested are the ones that are in, those, in this K minus P. Uh -huh. And this is ex exactly the, the case. So here K is our Vietari strips complex of the gluing. And uh, yeah, and we pick uh, a simplex there, which are, the most relevant to be studied in order to understand that inclusion. So is this, is this bound twice the distance between A and B? Is that most the distance from A to B plus the distance from B to B? I mean, is, is that sort of implying that, that the two simplex, or I guess the tetrahedron, uh, gets filled in? Is that what's going on here? Um, like it's, it's it's saying that the edge x y is also yes. part of the triangle. Yes, but a bit stronger. So uh -huh. here you have uh, this uh, this twice. Cool. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. More questions. May I ask? Uh, Thank you, Francesca, for your uh, talk. Uh, very interesting. But may I ask, uh, how do you plan uh, to use uh, this result? So is it so that uh, you plan to use uh, the fact uh, that uh, the union uh, e is a weakly equivalent uh, to the uh, total uh, mm -hmm. space or total simplicial complex so that uh, um, you plan uh, to apply, for example, Meyer Vietoris results, uh, kind of results uh, to the union in order to obtain information on the total simple complex? Is that the idea you plan uh, to carry Exactly. Out? So that's a, that's a very good question. And that's part of the motivation for, for this work. So um, it's uh, related to an efficiency problem. Imagine that you can uh, you can subdivide, you, you can split, um, yeah, you can study the, uh, just the components of a metric space and recover um, information about the total space that then if you have a very big 
uh, metric space, then you can if more efficiently maybe study uh, one part um, and then another and then another and then glue uh, all things together. Um, that's, that was the motivation. We didn't, uh, we didn't uh, do anything applied in that sense yet. Uh, but it's definitely an interesting fact that uh, in principle cannot be done because this homotopy, homotopical equivalence does not hold. But uh, sometimes it does if you control the, these obstruction complexes. Okay. Did I answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Hello, Francesca. Thank you for a nice talk. Uh, um, could could I go back one slide back? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So in this slide, I w wanted to figure out how uh, strong this assumption is, or do you have any way, like concrete algorithm, to find such x and y satisfying this condition? Uh, I don't have algorithms, but uh, yes, uh, you're right. These conditions are quite strict. They, oh. in particular, so they bound the diameter of the intersection that is required to be uh, pretty small, but this is not um, sufficient. You also have these uh, uh, conditions on, uh, on triangles. Oh. Otherwise, um, yeah, this, this does not um, um, is not sufficient to say that uh, the obstruction complex is associated to, to, to simplices like this one, this one in this picture is not empty. And um, as I said almost at the beginning, if the obstruction complexes are empty, then we lose control over uh, the inclusion. I see. Yes, thanks. But let me make a comment. For example, when A is consists of just one point or two points, which are very uh -huh. close, uh -huh. then you know, then the second condition is almost satisfied if you take two closest points. And then the first condition, well, this you have to you have to check. But but there are many cases, especially for graph, uh, in, so you know, coming from a from me metrics given by graphs. Uh -huh. uh, Henry has been studied a lot. That this situation occur quite often. Oh, thank you. Okay, so we have time for another question. If there are more questions, can I can I just ask quickly about um, still about this slide? Um, yeah. I guess is it? It looks like um, as the previous uh, person was just saying you can maybe find useful examples for this theorem where you take some very small a, mm -hmm. but then it looks like it might be difficult to, as you were saying, one of the motivations maybe is to break your space into several pieces so that you can do calculations with each piece. But I guess it might be hard um, because of this requirement that the, that the intersection be non-empty, I guess it might be hard to um, sort of iterate this theorem? Yeah, that's a, that's a very, very good question. Uh, so um, uh, I, I'm not sure that, uh, that I've understood, but uh, um, the idea of taking like more pieces, more, more than just two pieces uh, in the covering um, um, has not been studied yet by us at least. Um, because, um, yeah, mm, it's not been studied and, and it's not, it does not generalize immediately. Like, um, uh, uh, take studying three components, four components is not the same as studying two components intersecting. So yes, you're, you're right. It's, um, it's, yeah, uh, I, no, I see. Thank you. That that answers my question. I was just wondering if you meant um, if you if you meant that some you could easily use this theorem 
um, applying it multiple times to some cover ah, no. just, you know, multiple members. But no, now I understand. Thank you. No, that it was the case that we could to, could take uh, more than two um, the, the two sets covering uh, the vertices of the simplicial complex in the slide in, in the in the case uh, here. Sorry. Sorry, this is a bit long. Uh, in this case, but this was taken um, ad hoc as an example because uh, here uh, uh, the covering of the vertices is taken by removing just one point for each subset, uh, um, just one point on the vertices of sig of the vertices of sigma in each of uh, uh, the subset covering uh, covering k zero. So this is this was really ad hoc. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, thanks to Marek and Francesca for um, their wonderful talks. Um, um, as said, welcome to join us on Wednesday for the regular um, uh, Applied Topology Network seminar, uh, or we'll see you next Monday for the next uh, two, uh, two talks of the ATMCS Summer Series. Bye. Thank you.